Before we get into the video, let me get this straight. Playing with Grandmasters and Top 500s this season was probably the most fun I ever had in Overwatch, outside of playing with my friends for the goof. It's actually gotten to the point where my fight for getting the GM has become so desperate that I feel like Masters isn't even a good rank anymore, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. My personal Top 5 things that I think suck about playing in a high elo. And before some plebs come around saying, LOL Masters is not even a high elo. Get off my dick, this is not a fight I can win. And you know what, part of me agrees. When it comes to my own road up the ranks and my experience in the elo that I ended up with, yeah, I often feel like it's not that difficult to get in there. So let's just take this statistically. Because it's still the top 3%, meaning that literally 97% of the entire player base are likely to never touch this rating. Saying that the top 3% is not a high elo is like saying that taking 1 out of 10 hot dogs from a stack is not the minority of total hot dogs available. Now, before I get hungry, let's just get into the video, okay? What sparked the idea for this video is actually the YouTube comment section. I've seen a lot of people saying that they want to get into a high elo because they're tired of thing XYZ, and that without knowing, that's not necessarily that much better up here. So let's start with the first thing on the list, namely, ego. You might wonder, but Cliff, people having an ego that's bigger than their own skill rating is not all that unusual, and you would be right. But if you think about it, if the ego keeps growing together with their skill rating, then we end up with people in an extremely high elo having an extremely big ego. You might know this from your own games. Someone on your team is super confident about proposing a certain strategy they think will achieve certain victory and start assigning heroes to their teammates. Well, in most cases in high elo when things like that happen and nobody feels like arguing or talking back, it's not as much about the person's idea being bad, or that the strategy wouldn't work in theory, it's just that they like to ignore fine details. For example, they might propose a comp that requires very high mechanical skill on certain heroes, and the players who are assigned to those heroes cannot deliver on that. Or they propose a comm that requires a lot of coordination, but they just expect you to be able to run it without any comms whatsoever. Now, this won't be that big of a deal if someone spoke up in the first place saying that they're not good on those heroes, or if they just change the strategy after a couple failed attempts. But more often than not, this is where the blaming starts to take place. Nobody wants to take responsibility for the failed attempts, so everyone just starts pointing fingers. You did one thing the whole game. We all just fucked up, to be honest. We just lost so long into that Roadhog. No, don't say we, man. I watched you die. Yep. Get the turret! Get the turret! The <laughs> Hi, man! Why are you uh, time. attacking Mercy? Like, gone like Lucio. Yeah, and you didn't even uh, want to go with me, as a And we're just playing the blame game. Just trying to find out whose fault it is. And we all just yeah. clearly fucked up. No. Alright, you're perfect. It's all one person's fault. Hilariously enough, it's not like everyone just blames each other. They just choose one person who then supposedly was responsible for something that was just a terrible attempt from the entire team. Like your position. You died like all the time, dude. We all died. Nobody turned around no. for the road dog. I died three times, well, how can you say we all died all the time, man? I was watching you die. Alright, okay, okay. Okay, you're perfect. It's all our fault. We're throwing. Not throwing, just playing bad. I'm sorry that we cost you that uh, precious elo. So you're giving up? No, I'm still playing. Then don't talk about elo, man. And don't talk about whose fault it is. It doesn't help team morale. And it's usually either a DPS player or someone who very obviously did something wrong. Because it can't ever be my fault. Nope, in this team-based game, I'm the only one who never misplays and it is never my fault. That Reinhardt decided to charge at the wrong time early into our game? God, thanks for the loss, dude. Genji didn't get a six-man drag blade while I was the first to die in that engagement? Wow, why do you throw the game, dude? Come to think of it, they really enjoy saying things like dude or mate a lot. Now, it's not like this type of behavior is exclusive to high elo players, but from all the time I spent in Platinum, Diamond, Masters, and now higher Masters while I regularly queue with GMs, it's never been as bad as when I crossed the 3.5k mark. So if you think people stop pointing fingers in Masters Plus, I'm sorry to disappoint, but it's only getting worse. Now let's move on to another point that, while not exclusive to high elo plays alone, has been something that has only grown in severity ever since I hit Masters, and that is getting tilted. It all comes back down to egos and people thinking they never do anything wrong, but the way people tilt in high elo and how quickly they tilt is something I have yet to witness in any other elo I have played or even any other game for that matter. This is something that has actually been pissing me off a lot just recently and I'll use one of my more recent play sessions as an example because I played exactly 10 matches 
matches that evening, which is a very convenient number to work with. So in those 10 matches that I played, I have achieved 2 victories and 8 losses. Out of these 8 losses, 7 matches were perfectly winnable from my perspective, but someone ended up tilting. That one game that we didn't lose due to tilt was simply us getting outplayed. Now the form that this tilt assumes is quite interesting, because sometimes it starts right in the spawn room already. Someone doesn't like the hero someone else chose, so they just straight up throw the game with an attack Torbjorn, or pick a Winston to constantly throw themselves off the map. Another form of tilt is that some kids go on a losing streak and rather than just taking a break like a normal human being, keep queuing to purposefully lose games and tilt other people. Hanzo really is not a good pick against life. He isn't even a Hanzo main, so he's trolling or something because he's tilted. Holy fuck you guys, I'm AFK again. Fucking garbage player, you're sick of well, That's great, now everybody's tilting. But there's also the typical, you're not doing your job properly, so I will proceed to yell into my microphone as if that's gonna make anything better. Long story short, while not every game session ends with a 70% tilt ratio, it has happened quite regularly, and the way people tilt isn't only even more unreasonable, but also that much worse to deal with. Next point is something I can't quite summarize in a single term. It's when you lose games to really bizarre things, often quite simple things that you think people in this elo should know better. For the sake of simplicity, I'll just call this the RNG factor. Now, I made entire videos dedicated to the idea that players are boosted if they don't know certain things or are not good at certain things. So if you want a rather in-depth discussion about those featuring some perspectives you might have not taken into consideration before, these videos are called Masters equals the new diamond? Question mark And you're boosted rank inflation in Overwatch. What it comes down to is that you play your way up the ranks in hopes of having a more consistent gameplay experience, hoping that players are aware of simple concepts like regrouping rather than getting staggered, or even just picking the right heroes to counter the enemies. The idea is often that you as a player who has grown in skill over the seasons would expect other players to have similar experiences. Because you already went through those phases in Platinum where you kept trying to 1v6 the enemies and you went through those phases in Diamond where you kept trying to play Farah even though the enemies have quite a capable Widowmaker on their team. It's really dumb mistakes that make you wonder how on earth did these players even make it into Masters, let alone Grandmaster. And I can understand where that frustration comes from. I mean losing 100 to 200 SR because some kids keep tilting or other others make dumb mistakes throughout your evening is frustrating. Because you keep losing elo for things that you could have not prevented and are quite frankly not your fault. So it is obvious where accusations of players being boosted come from, however there are a lot of reasons for why those things happen. Maybe it's someone's ult account and they just don't care, maybe they let someone else play who can't perform at that level, or maybe they are tilted which makes them play worse than they usually would. Or maybe they're just exhausted, tired, stressed out or whatever else from work and life. In most cases however, odds are that the player in question provides something that helped them get into this elo in the first place, and a single game is often not enough to judge whether or not they actually belong there. It's easy to say that over time their rating will adjust anyway, so if they really are that bad and only got lucky, they will drop. But it doesn't make losing elo because of it any less frustrating. The next point hits really close to home for me personally, and that includes content creators. You know what, I can see why people stream snipe or lose games on purpose once they figure out that they are in a match with a content creator. I mean, aside of them just having some sort of dislike for their content, we sure as hell can be dicks. How many streamers or YouTubers do you know who purposefully dropped into bronze to then shit stomp their way back into Grandmaster? Is it fair to ruin the games of everyone they play against only to prove some stupid point for the sake of their content? No, of course not, and even I am guilty of purposefully losing games just to entertain my stream. The other day I ran into a 3 stack of French guys while playing on my old account, and while two of them honestly seemed like perfectly okay dudes, one of them was honestly the most aggravated, biggest dickbag I have come across in a long time. So me being being the asshole that I am, I decided to poke fun at the guy to aggravate him some more and eventually just lose the game entirely because he was being a dick to me. Switch, I'm sorry, I, I literally can't understand anything. If we could please speak English, it'd be great. Shut up. I mean, I just don't understand you, man. Le camembert. Oui, oui. Oh, switch. I'm wondering how triggered that guy is. Switch for the tank. I will, if you say please. I come in your home and I fuck and burn your fucking. Oh, wait, I'm not. All right, I'm throwing. There we go. 
In my defense, even if it's a poor one, he started being toxic to me right out of the gate. At any rate, again, does that excuse me purposefully losing a game that was perfectly winnable? After all, there were more people on my team who had nothing to do with that. But hey, that's just the kind of dumb shit content creators do and that is also the kind of dumb shit that people want to see. So yeah, sometimes it's just really annoying to run into a streamer on their Genji-only account or having a YouTuber purposefully throw a game for reasons that are not quite relatable. Sells a retard, but you're toxic. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> And because those guys play video games for a living, odds are that you will find more of them in a high elo. And lastly, number 5, Skill Decay. For all intents and purposes, Skill Decay is nothing but an inconvenience that attempts to force players to play more than they otherwise would. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for the base idea of players losing elo for not playing for excessive periods of time. After all, the highest level of ladder play should be reserved for dedicated players who are actively competing, and not for someone who just plays once a week for the sake of waving their rating around. However, for every Everyone who doesn't play video games for a living but is still a pretty good player, it's just annoying and I can see why it would be. At the end of the day, skill decay doesn't matter. If you're a 4.2k grandmaster, you're not gonna stop playing against diamonds for not touching the game for two weeks. Because odds are that you are going to destroy everyone around that elo and it just doesn't make any sense from a balancing perspective. However, if you do have a busy few weeks and you were shooting for a higher rating, it's just very inconvenient to have to regrind points that you effectively didn't even lose since you're still competing with the same players you normally would. Not to mention that some people enjoy playing a variety of games, maybe not all of them competitively, but it still sucks to have this nagging feeling at the back of your head knowing that you can't sit out on rank for too long because you're gonna decay. So it really isn't more than a slap on the fingers and in my opinion, while I would not agree with removing it entirely, I feel like a better incentive to actively compete would make more sense than just low-key threatening players. But this concludes today's video as I talk about my personal top 5 things that I think suck about playing in a high elo in Overwatch. Again, while I know that not all these things are exclusive to higher rated players, I do remember my own innocent and rather romantic idea of what it would be like to compete in Masters. So I felt like it might help people lowering their expectations rather than going into it thinking it's a brand new world where nobody is toxic and always tries the hardest. Do also keep in mind that experiences can vary strongly on a person to person basis. But anyway, I'm done for the day, so thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you all next time. Come back to me. <laughs> nice jump there. <laughs> oh fuck off! <laughs> How did I miss that? Oh, that's great. Next time, buddy. Oh, yeah, I think I'm lucky. <laughs>